and that's just part of the beautiful evolution uh, and and what it means to be sure, a human sure. being in the world today. Well, well Adam, Adam, without getting into a debate about about you know Darwin's evolution versus evolution, we know cars evolve, we know computers evolve, we know technology evolves, we know viruses evolve, we know bacteria change. And you're absolutely right. We go from hunter-gatherers in bands to tribal groups and then to agrarian groups and then into city-states and then into states, countries, empires. And there's no doubt that, that well, w without saying the name of the video because it's a family show and I've promised to not to, to, to even control myself. I, I happened to see a video this morning. I didn't have time to watch the, the whole thing, but I watched most of it. And you're talking to this mindless neocon woman. And about she's effing, supporting the war, and it's, it's warning. Supporting the war in Iraq will make you sound like an effing moron. And it's true. And I proved it. <laughs> well, I mean, sure, she's always against. Well, uh, uh, briefly, talk about that little interview. You were going to the Koch Brothers event. Right. This is the Americans for Prosperity annual convention, and these are people that, uh, you know, it, it, it's hard to understand uh, where they're coming from all the time with uh, the people that are really behind this because they're advocating for free markets, uh, but they're, they're not always advocating for real freedom. A lot of them support kind of establishment Republicans, and a lot of the crowd is more mainstream conservative, which we know is not really conservative so much as it's kind of right statism as opposed to left statism. And they have their own pet projects and things that they want to use the government for. And, yeah, and they love they, the drug war. They, yeah. uh, I mean, but, but how can even these mainline right wingers like Mitt Romney, four open borders, abortion, gun control, carbon taxes, wrote Obamacare, and they and, and I'll tell them this, they go, I don't want to hear that. I mean, these people really are a joke. I mean, they're as dumb as the Obama supporters. I mean, if, if they say they're mainline Republicanism, but they don't even follow that. I mean, it, it's incredible. It's like Rick Perry doubling the size of Texas government, bringing in three new taxes. And he says, I make Texas a nice place to live. Why? Because it's got a little less government than some other states, so it's a little better. I mean, this guy tells us government, Rick Perry, actually says, I made Texas great. <laughs> well, I think this is why people are enjoying my videos, is that when you confront people's delusions with the truth in conversation the right way, it, it is guaranteed to reveal what is then exposed as really an absurd, overwhelming idiocy, for, for lack of a better way of describing it. And it demonstrates what we're up against, because it's not education, it's not facts, it's not a matter of the, the truth getting out there. It's religious belief. No, it's, it's more than that, Alex. I, I really think it's, uh, you know, an, an inability to see past our own delusions and be, being held back by our own fears and being willing to accept a comfortable tyranny rather than, as our, it's been called by our founders, the animating contest for freedom and having belief in your own self-worth to think, I don't need a leader. I don't need someone to be the It's alpha being your own leader. Right, exactly. And I think what's happening is, is, is part of this human evolution is that individual empowerment is getting so good that people are really grasping onto the tools of logic and reason and, and self-empowerment like never before. And like my generation, the millennials, and I, I'm, I'm on the cusp, I'm 29 years old, and you know, when you're on the cusp, you always say you're with the younger generation. But the millennials, those of us who grew up with the internet, and, and I know you, you, you think the same way, but you know, not, you're a little bit older, and not everybody, as, as you know, who's older, is able to, to adapt to this new form of, of information war, this new way of looking at the world through the internet, taking advantage of the tools that are available to us. But my generation, almost all of us have it hardwired in a certain way. You know, you, you, can't, you can lie to us, but you can't get away with it for very long. And when we have the truth button right there, one click away, we can go to Infowars.com. You know, you just, you can use the Google. You can, it's all right there. It's very, very difficult to hide the truth these well, days. Well, you're right. It's a giant divide where, you know, there's so many old folks who are already awake, so they're already on board with us. But I notice we don't get a lot of new old people. I mean, 60 and above, because they still are watching TV. They've got a computer to go, you know, check stock prices or, you know, uh, and children. Yeah, yeah, see emails the grandkids or see jokes, you know, that their kids send them, but they they are not checking things. They're not and, and they still don't know who Ron Paul is some of them. You know, it's like because the uh, the, the media has tried to ignore him, but going back uh, j just to quantify, I wasn't criticizing people having religious beliefs. I'm saying politically it's almost like a dogmatic 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the attachment to the religion of statism is the same as the uh, attachment yeah. to any religion. And, and I have great respect for people of personal faith and great disdain for people who feel like they need an organized religion to relate to God. Exactly. Organized religion is the problem. But let's but I mean, just quantifying my thought here, I went to our family ranch this weekend and, we, and they've got a deer camp down there. We lease it to some deer hunters. And I'm over there, and they all knew who I was. So, I mean, that's the problem now. I can't even just, you know, they're like, well, we leased this. We didn't know it was Alex Jones. Uh, and I'm going, yeah. And uh, is it, I, I like some of your show, but is 9-11 really an inside job? And the guy looked at me, and he said, are you a Christian? And I said, yeah, I'm a Christian. He goes, well, so am I, but there's a lot of holes in that. And he goes, I choose to believe it's not an inside job. And by the way, these guys were all engineers. They were all real smart, and, he, and, and it was profound. I said, you choose. And he goes, yep. And, and this was a smart guy. He, he literally did a crime stop like 1984 and said, I choose not to believe this. I said, well, what about the passports coming out of the plane to the ground, being found that day? I mean, do you really believe they came out of the fireball, got found in all the dust? And he said, yep. And he looked right at me and just winked. He cannot deal with it. He loves, and in a way, it's almost like men who stay with women or women who stay with men that beat them. I mean, it's yeah. almost like they're committed and they're going to they're gonna take it. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is part of the empowerment, though, that is, is occurring right now. People who understand that they have the truth button, that they can question everything and seek answers. And it's not futile. It's not something that makes your life harder. It's something that makes you more empowered. They are, they are coming on to this new understanding, this new paradigm of, of, of self-empowerment, of self-awareness, and of realizing that you can be the alpha in your own life. You do not need a leader. You do not need anyone to tell you how to live your life or run your life. And we as a species don't need, don't need people to lead us by force. We don't need to bully people to go along with the common will anymore. We have the tools to organize society. There are no excuses anymore. None of the things that our parents' generation were convinced we needed government for will, will we tolerate systems of violence supporting in the future. We're going to find all the ways to make all of those systems superfluous. That's the promise of our generation and the internet gives us the perfect tool to be able to do it and the way to show that there is no excuse that we need to turn to Adam, I agree with you but that leads us to this point the system knows this awakening's happening it's throwing everything it's got into the mix right now to block this awakening from happening because if you look to the founding fathers that's not 235 years old that's 235 years new. It was the greatest advancement in the Renaissance, in the Awakening, in the Enlightenment. The globalists are trying to bring us back to 5,000 years ago, or 5,000 BC, or 10,000 BC, in an attempt to cement their control. And I don't see, I don't see that paradigm working. But look at the founders. It, it was all about how many languages you could speak. It was all about your intelligence, uh, uh, being an inventor. It was about your mind and being goal-oriented and building up society and people b being, being loved instead of being attacked or you're producing too much, we're now going to steal from you. It, it, it is the lowest common denominator versus versus the Enlightenment. So, so, so I want to give you a couple minutes to, to, uh, to expound on that. And then in closing, because we're about to go to break and come back uh, uh, with uh, one of your colleagues who's fighting, and, and of course you covered this, uh, Liz, uh, who's, who, who's dealing with the uh, milk police, but, 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 but speak to where you see this awakening going. Excellent. Yes, Liz Reitzig is doing great work for uh, for food freedom with the raw milk freedom riders. But um, about what you said, I think you give the super class a little bit too much credit, Alex. I, I think that we, we know that there is a super class out there, that there are people with ungodly concentrations of wealth and power in the world today. And I don't think they're really a, a, as coordinated a, a, as you give them credit for. I think there's a lot of competition within that group. I think there's a lot of disagreement. There are some rival factions. And, and I know you know this, and, I, and you know far more about the details of, of what they do than I do. And I certainly uh, you know, concede to your, your awareness of, of the facts. But I, I really think that there will always be a super class to the extent that humanity tolerates its own exploitation. And changing that fundamental paradigm of society is what's going to take that power away. So the people who are in that position to exploit see an opportunity and they take advantage of it. And they provide something for the people that we really want. I mean, if the people really need leaders, if the people have this psychological need to be led, someone is providing that. Someone is providing something 
of value and they are getting they are getting a lot of money for it. They're being very well compensated, if you will. And what we are trying to convince people is, as libertarians, people with the message of freedom, is that you are better off in a real economic sense saying, no, we do not need these leaders. And I think that, uh, as you point out, there is, in, in the current system, and, and by that, to, to reference specifically, the current systems of government and centralized banking and fiat currency, uh, the, the existing mechanisms of exploitation, yes, in, in many ways are failing, and they will, they will fall in, in chunks and, and fade away. And, and as they fall in chunks, particularly the, the big chunk right now, the U.S. dollar system, there are going to be people who are going to get their last licks in on an economy that's beholden to the U.S. dollar. I think that's really what you see with the Eurozone crisis. It's a good excuse to make more money, to exploit more wild people will accept it. It's what you see with quantitative easing here. Ben Bernanke is going to get in his last licks on this system for, for all of the people that are hooked up to it and benefit from it. And when it fails, there will be a new system of whatever exploitation is tolerated by the broader population. And, and, and it will go on until it is fully rejected because people realize that they are beautiful, free, independent human beings who should be in charge of their own lives. Adam, I think you've hit on a key area here. The, the social engineers, and, and they've written books and white papers on this that are public that we've covered, they're masters at human psychology and activity. So they create exploitive systems that are outside the free market, that are cheating, that use force by ganging up against the individual or smaller groups, smaller countries, mm -hmm. and then they rationalize what they're doing. But then inside the countries, they then exploit the underclass and, and, and then have them wage war against the middle class, saying it's wrong that somebody's got more than you. As you said, there's always going to be a super class. But are they oppressing other people? Are they doing it through cheating? Or are they doing it through the fact that we want to buy their products, we want to associate with them because of their skill, their athleticism, their beauty, their scientific mind, their constructiveness, their literature? Again, that's what gives the world diversity. And we have to realize, you know, uh, all of us are, are endowed by our creator to have this pursuit of happiness and that we're all created equal in, in different gifts, but that some people are going to shine more than others, are going to have better opportunities, are going to have better luck. And any attempt to ever suppress that is going to create a greater tyranny than you were fighting to begin with. Well, I, I think that super class will sort of, I, for lack of a better way of saying it, sort of naturally fade into the general population with time. And I, and I don't mean that there won't always be people who are extraordinarily rich compared to the rest of the population. I, I think in a free market uh, where you have industrial technology, 